Assalamu alaikum. So this is the second part of the discussion that we started on the current situation and where we, where we stand. Let's start with how we as Shias, Muslims, have acted in the following situations. Let me ask a few questions to myself and to the broader audience. When a child was slaughtered in Medina, roughly slightly more than a year ago, February 2019, his name was Zakaria, and he was slaughtered because he was a Shia. What did we do? Sheikh Nimr was killed by the authoritarian, authoritarian Saudi regime. What did we do? Kashmiris were under lockdown for months. What did we do? Muslims were slaughtered in Myanmar and put into concentration camps in China. What did we do? Shias are killed in Pakistan and they were killed in Pakistan for years. What did we do? And after thousands of deaths, what we did start was supporting the families of the martyrs, but couldn't do anything to stop more killing. And after thousands more dead, the local Shia started protesting with dead bodies on the streets, which pushed the hearts of the authorities to start taking some action. But what did the Shias of the West do? other than financial support and sub lip service. What did we do when Saudis funded atrocities in all parts of the world under the name of extremist Islam? What did we do when our holy sites in Iraq under were under the control of Saddam Hussein who did not allow us to do Matham in Karbala and was one of the worst tyrants in the history of humanity. And these are some examples. And there's so many other examples where I can ask, what did we do? One example where I would say that the Shia community has united over the past several years is the cause of Jannat al-Baqi through the actions especially on the day of destruction, 8th Shawwal. But our voices remain disjointed, mired with inconsistency, and less frequent to exert the pressure needed to make a difference. Normally, we have stayed quiet, as if either it is none of our business or the situation will address itself. Well, dear brothers and sisters, it is our business. It is the business of every single human being, every single Muslim, every single Shia. Standing with Haq for justice and against the injustice and oppression is and should be a global phenomenon. If the world doesn't adhere to it, why are we lagging behind? We are not like the rest of the world. We are different. Our values come from the Imams, السلام, from the Holy Prophet and his descendants. What has happened cannot be turned back. Our Imams were persecuted. They were not our Imams. They were the Imams for the entire humanity. They were the Imams for all the Muslims. They were persecuted, and we, who call ourselves Shias, couldn't do anything. Now, we need to stand up against these atrocities in future. We have witnessed many tests. We have endured many difficulties. Now we need to show that we are united and have courage to stand for Haq and stand against injustice. I hope and pray inshallah, that this time is different. It is narrated from our fifth Imam, Imam Muhammad Baqir salam and also from Amir al-Mawmini salam himself, and I've read it in Bihar al-Anbar in, on multiple occasions, especially in the book of the 12th Imam. 
And the example that Imams have given about the last times, how the Shias will be tested, is very eye-opening. Amir al-Mu'minin says to one of his companions, giving the example of how Shias will be tested. Think of an example of a person who has some wheat. He has taken the wheat, cleaned it, and then stored it in storage. After several years, he goes back into the storage and finds that there are mites in the wheat. So he clears up the wheat again and leaves it in the storage. In the process of cleaning, he takes out mites and the bad parts of the wheat is thrown out. So lesser amount of wheat is left. He goes back into the storage after several years and again finds mites there. He again clears them and leaves the remainder of good wheat in the storage. After several times, the wheat is left is a very small portion of the original wheat. But what is left doesn't get infested with mites. But it is pure. It's a smaller quantity, but it is pure. This small group is like the true Shias, who will not be impacted by any test or tribulation. So my question for myself and for everyone who's listening is, are we going to change with these tests? Or are we going to stand up for Haq? Are we going to do Amr bin Maruf wa Nahiyan al Munkar? As has been asked of us, by our Imams. Are we going to wake up from the steep slumber of sleep that we have been in for aeons? And that's why the next 114 days are important. We need to unite and raise our voice and stand for justice and hope. If we can convey the message in these elections, the world will listen. If we remain quiet, this light of hope will also extinguish. Virus is a sign of Allah. We now should channel our energies towards change rather than just talking about non-essential and non-transformational items. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.